All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, the first part of chapter 19 of Dawn of the Aspects. Some Jaina stuff, and then some Proto-Dragon stuff. What a surprise. Let's go! Jaina had now been trying to figure out a way to undo the spell work on her books for quite a while, and she was getting kind of sick and tired of it. She was now seriously considering using stronger measures, but she didn't want to attract Archmage Madeira or anyone else's attention, and then have to deal with Dalaran's stuff. Kallik was still very much in danger, even if it does just seem like he's having a whale of a time learning history. But Jaina decided it was worth the risk of discovery, so she began her casting, ready to make these bloody books explode or something, but then stopped, because on top of her bookshelf was an ancient reptilian skull that she'd inherited from Ronin. Although it specifically didn't mean anything to her, it did cause her to recall her brief visit to the Dragonblight several videos ago, the huge skeleton of Galakrond, and that weirdo Benik. She then remembered how the Taunka had drawn that pattern in the air, how had Benik remembered such a complex symbol so precisely, despite the fact she'd probably only ever seen it once? Was she even really a Taunka? That lion bitch! Jaina drew the symbol in the air and studied it, and then realised she'd been a fool. A foolish fool. Had she paid more attention when she first saw it, she would have noticed something fairly obvious. Not that for the purpose of this video it looks like a dick, but that it was a key. So Jaina thrust the symbol towards one of her tomes and then watched as it penetrated the book. The lavender glow faded from it, and then faded from her entire collection. So she immediately seized the book and had another look-see through the pages. And, exactly where she'd expected to find the information she needed, she found the information she needed. When together, the two parts were more than the sum of their individual measure, their power magnified. Archmage Wendell suggested that there were also other combinations that the pair could make, but that the immense time since their creation had caused some of those combinations to function in error. That must be it. At that point, voices arose outside Jaina's chambers. She probably shouldn't have talked to herself out loud so much. But Discovery didn't matter anymore, because Jaina believed she finally had what she needed. She started to cast her warp spell, and about ten seconds later, she vanished. And she then appeared just outside the magical boundaries of the Nexus. This wasn't her intended destination, so she started casting again, and after another 10 seconds, she disappeared, and then appeared in exactly the same place. Now as fun as it would be to pad this video up to 10 minutes by just doing this over and over again, we'll move on. Jaina then attempted to probe the Nexus's wards in order to establish why her teleportation wasn't working correctly, and the probe failed. Considering Jaina had only recently been to the Sanctum, she figured Kalek must have adjusted the wards in order to keep her out. What a douche. But, Jaina believed she held Kallax's only hope of being freed from whatever the artifact was doing to him. So all douchiness aside, she cast a spell that draped over the entire field of wards, looking for some fault, no matter how small, that she could take advantage of. However, there wasn't one. Jaina was familiar with the complexities of the Nexus's wards, so she then started looking for changes rather than faults. Understanding what had been changed may reveal a way past the defences, and this search actually led to something. There had been alterations, but not by Kallax, the entire network now emanated the same energy signature as the artifact, and that was daunting for about two seconds before Jaina realised she now had a key for these kind of situations. Once again, she drew the magical symbol in the air and probed the wards. The artifact's influence on the area faded, so Jaina probed a little bit harder and faster. However, the energy signature then reconstructed itself and rejected the key, and the force at which it reversed matters struck Jaina's mind hard and gave her a bit of a headache. It was interesting though. The artifact's magic had not been acting with any particular malice, it wasn't personally attacking the Archmage, it was simply repairing itself. It was time to find out whether this spell work had limits. So Jaina recreated the symbol again, and again, and again, until she was absolutely surrounded by magical symbols. Let's see how you like these apples. She sent her army of glowing willies into the air. They hovered for a second and then spread out, circling the whole of the Nexus and its protective wards. Once each was in position, Jaina took one last look at how the wards were arranged, and then sent her massive dicks hurtling towards it. And as they touched the wards, the Nexus erupted in an explosion of white and lavender energy. Meanwhile, back in the past, the five Proto-Dragons landed on a bunch of ridges. They were exhausted. For several minutes, they simply crouched where they perched and all remained deep in thought. The devastation caused by Galakrond had begun to sink in, and the fact that they seemed to be the only ones left fit to face him. The mountain wind howled, but Malagos heard another sound mixed in with it, but as he listened for it to happen again, there was nothing. However, the Icy Blue noticed that Asira also appeared to be listening. She must have heard it too. And after a while, there was another brief sound. Malagos recognised it the second time. The mournful hiss of a proto-dragon. Asira flew off towards it, and Malagos followed. The others, who had apparently not heard the sound, decided to pursue anyway. The yellowish female flew into a shadowed area between two mountains and then seemingly vanished. Malagos slowed slightly, and then entered the shadows as well. 
Barely had he done so, another proto-dragon rose in front of him. Fortunately, Kallax's host could just about make out that this was a living creature, not one of the undead, but the young male was kind of startled by Malagos' sudden appearance. Alexstrasza then entered and assisted Malagos in pinning the young proto-dragon against a wall, and as they did, Asira appeared. No, he was just scared. Let him go. The captured male frantically looked at Malagos and Asira, and then made like a duh sound, which helped Malagos to realise this was one of the lesser proto-dragons, one that had not quite made the leap to intelligence yet. And then more duh sounds arose from behind Asira, and Malagos caught sight of several shapes moving around behind her. And at that point, Naltharian and Nazdormu joined. What is this? The seemingly agitated shapes behind Asira started to move forward, and turned out to be a whole bunch of living proto-dragons. Mostly the lesser ones, but also a few of the more intelligent ones. But all of them shared a tremendous anxiety. Malagos knew that he'd seen some of them as part of Talonix's doomed charge, but based on how terrified they all were, he concluded they'd probably all been there. Galakrond comes! Galakrond comes! No, he doesn't. Quiet. The assembled survivors quieted, but only out of a more immediate fear of Neltharion. But the Charcoal Grey's outburst also shocked Asira, who placed herself between him and the survivors. You be quiet. Neltharion was a little bit taken aback by that, so he clamped his mouth shut and backed away, and Asira then turned back towards the shivering proto-dragons. No Galakrond. All good. Although that did calm them somewhat, they were understandably still a little bit scared, and Kalek could hardly blame them. They'd all have to live with the horror of Talonix's campaign for the rest of their existence. And to be fair, the rest of their existence might not be that long, unless something changed soon. Galakrond, we must... Suddenly, the world turned upside down for Kalek. It had been a while since he'd experienced this sensation, and he felt as if his mind was being torn in a thousand different directions as his vision fell into darkness. And we're leaving it there! Don't worry, Kalek's not going to wake up back at the Nexus and then just complain for five minutes. We'll find out what the bloody hell's going on with him in the next video. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying the book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!